Hey guys, welcome back. It has been a while since I was able to make a video because right now my lectures at university started and I had to do quite a bit of stuff. But now I'm finally able to do another YouTube video and today I would like to do two things. For one, I would like to try and salvage SMD components off of this over here. And this looks a bit odd, but this is the internals or are all the internals of an old camera and over here is the actual image uh, sensor which I will keep as it is because I'm unsure if I am able to desolder the chip off of the PCB without damaging but the rest can be easily separated it has these awesome small connectors and other bits and pieces that I would like uh, to salvage now this is not really necessary and worth for most of the components but this is more like a small exercise in soldering or desoldering and repairing SMD components and the second thing I would like to do is test a new lens or rather a few lenses for my uh, camera I bought a set of four lenses they are individually packaged these lenses can be installed in front of the camera and allow the camera to focus in at a much uh, shorter distance than normally because if you go into the tele objective or the tele lens of this camera what happens is it can only focus everything that is further away than one and a half meter this thing also changed uh, I only did two videos with the new camera and this is now uh, capable of recording in 4k the camera that I used before was the camera for my smartphone which I'm currently using uh, for audio recording and other stuff but it can show you so this is hard to see I think but here you can see me <laughs> and this is the app that controls my camera and I have audio recording and this smartphone the smartphone camera on the back side this was the one I used for all the previous YouTube videos and now I have a much better camera and actually can record in 4k quality again I'm going to uh, learn a bit about SMD soldering and desoldering repairing with this old stuff and I will try to keep and salvage as many components as possible now the only thing that will stay as it is is this over here and this is the flash of the camera and because this generates high voltage I will keep it as it is and see if I can do something with this circuit having a small high voltage generator might be interesting but I have to take a closer look at that the rest is pretty much for salvage these connectors for example they are really really interesting they might not be very expensive but sometimes they are hard to get your hands on them and I would like to keep them and same for the for these chips over here this seems like an SRAM this is maybe the picture processor and we have other chips and I will take a look at the data sheet of each of the chips later on now let's go ahead and try soldering as many components as possible okay let's start with the easiest and I think this is the easiest of the PCBs because we have big chips and now let's zoom in and see how far we can go in this is the closest we can get but if I use one of the lenses it should start with the smallest one we might be able to get a much bigger picture okay now this is close up plus one does it help yeah it does that looks quite good but we need more light I might use a different lens right away let's use plus two and that seems to be the maximum we can go in with the plus two and this looks much better now let's start and remove the big chip we are currently focused on maybe just maybe I should use a bit of flux to make it easier and by the way the flux I'm using this stuff over here this is just a bit of alcohol with colophonium actually the material that is used for most flux 
And now I will warm everything up. The alcohol will vaporize and the colophonium will slowly creep underneath the chip and make the solder flow more easily. Yeah, I think I should use the big nozzle, not the small one. So let me just remove the nozzle. That should make everything a bit easier. All right, so the nozzle, the reducing nozzle is now removed. I'll just hold it on top. And now we can heat up a bigger area. And it finally... There it is. This is the chip. This one can go to the side. Now I will remove this chip over here. Where is my flux? Okay. In a moment you will see my lack of experience. I'm not waiting long enough for the solder to flow and while removing or trying to remove the chip I will knock off quite a few SMD components around it. And that is just something that I have to learn and that is to let everything take its time, let the solder flow and then be also really careful because I knocked off quite a few components as you can see. And again I wasn't careful with my forceps, I knocked off quite a few of the SMD components. If this was a repair or repair attempt that would be not too good. Now I c could realign all the components it's doable, but it's uh, additional work that is unnecessary. As I stated before, I'm really interested to salvage all of these connectors. And in a moment I will try to remove one of these flat cable connectors. They are a bit tricky to remove. I use plenty of flux and I have to flow the solder from the small uh, legs without damaging the plastic. And as you will see, Unfortunately, the plastic got slightly burned, but the, the upside is it's not bent, it's still in shape, and it's just a small burn mark on top. For all of the other connectors, I'm a bit more careful with this, and also successful for the most part. Now onto this big Hynix chip over here. I'm going to apply flux to all the legs and I try to apply to evenly apply heat with my heat gun. But here's something I learned in the process of this video. Using a reducing nozzle is not good for such large components. What you should do instead is always change the nozzle depending on the component you try to desolder or resolder. If you use a reducing nozzle you have to move quickly around and you can't really evenly apply heat to all of the legs and to a bigger surface area. You really focus in at one specific area and that does not work for this type of large uh, chip. You have to either remove your reducing nozzle or use a nozzle that has a bigger um, outlet. So I tried to desolder it but I wasn't successful because I did not want to overheat the chip. I decided to move on and again remove just random components off of the PCB uh, to see and again uh, learn a bit about soldering. It's uh, more like a practice. Uh, not really that I need all of these components or that it's necessary, it's just practice. After playing around with all kind of different SMD components, I decided to again try to remove one of the two 
big chips that are left over. But instead of going for the Harnix chip that I just went for, I'm going for this NEC uh, microcontroller. And as you can see, I removed the reducing nozzle. Flux is still applied to all of the legs and I'm now heating up the whole chip. And this actually works much better, but as you again can see, I'm not patient enough. I start trying to remove the chip off of the PCB way too early. And I also hit quite a few components with my uh, forceps in the process. I also decided to apply a bit more flux because I, it uh, seems like uh, on the top side there was a bit too little. And finally the chip is removed. And now onto the Hynix chip over here. Uh, there should be enough flux and I'm now going to remove the chip with no nozzle or no reducing nozzle attached. But still I'm impatient and I poke around way too early. And I hit off two components. Yeah, that's... Uh, I just have to learn to take my time. And it goes off. Nice. So the thing is, I, I have to say that Yes, I'm not taking my time, but also I didn't treat this to be something like, oh, I'm going to repair something, because if I were to do that, yeah, I definitely would take more time. Okay, so the first PCB is now cleared off of all the components that I would like to do salvage, and also a few components more, because I was so fascinated uh, that the uh, lens makes everything so much bigger and it was so easy to remove the the even the smallest components with just the uh, the smartphone with just what I saw on my smartphone this was so fascinating I just couldn't stop myself but for the next few uh, PCBs I'm only going to remove what I would like to keep and yeah maybe a few more components I don't know Let's see, it's so fascinating, because when I made the video in which I tried to make my action camera into a microscope, this somewhat did work, but not perfectly. So this is actually much better, and I will keep removing components, and you can just watch me doing that. And in the end I will show you a few components that I think are worth salvaging and I will show, also show you how small they actually are. Uh, for example, these components over here, how small they are and how big they appear to be. And from what I can tell, the video quality is really good. Before I try to remove any of the components over here, I applied plenty of flux and I'm not going to heat up the whole area therefore no reducing nozzle because I tried to remove all of the components or most of the components rather I'm really interested in the chokes but also potentially in what seems to be like diodes or big capacitors or components that I can't identify uh, doesn't matter um, the, the chokes I'm really interested in and the other components. I have to look up what the markings mean, what they are. And uh, yeah, again, you can see that I'm really impatient and I'm not experienced with this kind of stuff. I'm poking around all the time. And what I should do instead is move my heat gun a bit more in the beginning to heat up all the metal pads and then focus on an area where I actually try to remove it. Because you, if, you, if you're not moving around, you're first sinking a lot of heat into other areas where, uh, in other copper areas. But if you heat up everything at the same time and then focus on an area, this uh, heat sinking is not as severe and you can actually remove components a bit faster. But now that the PCB is actually heated up, I decided to attach my reducing nozzle so I can focus on to specific components. Because if the reducing nozzle is not attached, you spread out the airstream onto a bigger area 
uh, which also can, when soldering smaller components, make it uh, take longer to desolder. So the biggest takeaway from the whole video for me is to always use a nozzle that is appropriate for the component. So the nozzle used it depends on the component I try to solder. Alright, so here are all the components I decided to keep. We have four of the microchips, all of the uh, flat cable connectors over here and these uh, stackable connectors. Four chokes, this thing that looks like a small transformer, um, components that look like either diodes or capacitors, this small battery and four of these SMD switches. The rest goes straight into the trash. I uh, have no use for it and I'm also going to keep this PCB over here and there are three components marked which I will use to show you how good the camera is actually with its macro lens. But first the four chips I decided to uh, keep are for one this thing over here which is the DSP um, something something Essentially, this chip has two interesting features. For one, it has an integrated 32-bit ARM7 uh, RISC processor with 80 MHz uh, speed and also eight parallel 8-bit ADCs, which can come in handy at some point. Then we have the small chip over here. Now, this is the AD9991, which is a 10-bit CCD si signal processor. Then we have this Samsung chip over here and this is a 100, 100, yeah, 128 megabit uh, 16M times 8 SLC NAND flash chip. So no SRAM. Same goes for this one. This is also not an SRAM chip. This is actually, oops, this is a DRAM chip. It's a 16-bit synchronous DRAM chip with 256 megabit uh, capacity. Before I wrap up this video, let me give you an impression on how small the components actually are and clarify a few things. So the footage you see right now, I'm measuring the components and I'm using my main camera which is a Panasonic Lumix FZ82 and this camera is a bridge camera and has a 60 times optical zoom. I'm in this uh, situation using a plus two macro lens uh, that allows me to focus on a much shorter distance. And the components I'm measuring, the first component I measured, this four legged components that looks like a bridge rectifier is 2 millimeters by 1.5 millimeters. The second component in the middle, the one I'm currently not measuring, is 1.1 millimeter by, by 0.6 millimeter. And the component, the last component, the other black component, um, is 1.6 millimeter by 0.8 millimeters. And that is really, really small. So tell me what you think about this. I think it's awesome. Uh, it shows me that using macro lens definitely makes the camera right now my main choice for soldering. The only thing I have to figure out is a way to get the footage to a bigger screen than my smartphone. I hope you liked this small video and if you did please leave a like, comment down below. And other than that, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.